Hello, I'm Larry Kitchen, and this is Painting Your Oil Pickout. Now what you'll see is that I'm working with a filbert brush, and in this four times the speed painting video demonstration, I think you'll be able to use this to build an oil painting on top of your oil pickout. Now you notice my color array across my glass palette there. And at any point, just stop this video if you want to see, you know, which colors were used in mixing up the various tones. You just have to pause your, your, uh, your video. Just hit the space bar and you'll see which ones I've used. So just follow along that way. It seems to help a lot of students that way. Now you'll notice that I started with the forehead and I mixed starting with the weaker color of white and blended um, red and yellow into it to get a to get a flesh tone and I'm just working my way down the face now I'm painting with very little turpanoid uh, it's mostly oil paint and the dry brush technique of pulling pulling those colors across the surface I'm looking for highlights midtones and shadows I try to think in those three values as I'm working. And I'll also squint at my reference material uh, and you know, try to mix that color up. And although this looks fast, um, you want to spend most of your time mixing the right color and putting it in the right place. You'll notice I'm adding reds across the cheek, the nose, and the earlobe. That's because blood comes close to the surface of the skin and those areas tend to be red. So combining a little bit of knowledge with observation, uh, you know to look for the redder spots on the face if you know where those capillaries come close to the surface of the skin. So I'm, I'm mixing uh, just the basic flesh tones and as I move over to the right, uh, I'm having to build in shadow areas. Now, I'll add either brown or blue into the middle, mid-value flesh tone to get the shadows. Now I'm punching up a few highlights on the forehead and going on to work in that shadow area. I work back and forth and clean my brush. Now right there, I'm showing you that I've, I've jumped down to a smaller brush and I'm building solid black shadows in there. Uh, yes, the you know we see a range that goes all the way to black, the absence of color. So you have to paint that in. Um, if you stop short of laying in the darkest values, then you won't have as rich a, uh, an image as as you might have had if you're a little more timid. So laying in those you know the dark of the hat and the the dark of the void of the of the mouth behind the tongue and behind the ear. So that'll force me to paint up to those darks and use the full range. So there I'm building in the shadows, nostril and so forth, the dark mustache, I'll lay that in. And then I'll have uh, most of the, the black values, probably a little touch underneath the lip. And then I'll move on probably to start building uh, the flesh tones down a little further um, as we move south. Now, notice on that that I've added a little bit of blue, that light blue, into the flesh tone. See what it does? It sort of uh, makes it a cooler flesh tone. So now, pushing back down toward the bottom of the face, notice I'm starting to build those wrinkles. Now, right now, it looks a little strange but I'll lay a shadow value in between those two high spots. So here comes um, sort of a bluish tone into the flesh tone. So there's a shadow value in between the high ridges of that flesh. I'm trying to make it look and move like a garment would as it's wrinkled and falling out of the light. So blue flesh tone over on the right. And then I'm moving uh, back and forth. Now, when you lay blunt colors in next to each other, and you want to clean your brush and blend them gently, 
between those two. Now I've added a little red uh, into that flesh tone and I'm going to just drag to create uh, the lip values and the reason lips are red is because there's blood just below the surface of the skin. So and I also find that it's a nice uh, hot and cool mix. There's something really nice and lifelike about uh, putting cold values against hot values. So there's the warm value of the tongue uh, and it fades to the back edge. And then I'm laying in lighter warm values along those edges. There's a little highlight ridge uh, almost up to white and I'll drop in teeth like chiclets as they curve around. Not being particularly careful. Uh, his bottom row of teeth doesn't look all that great. And then highlighting on the tongue to show a little broken color there and moisture. There's a little highlighting here and there. I'm trying not to go highlight happy, but highlights are uh, quite fun because they usually are saved to the end because they need to sit on top of your painting. And they do end up showing uh, the form of, of uh, the structure. So just doing a few touch-ups and we're moving along. Now, what in the world is this, you might ask? Well, this reference that I'm looking at has this singing character. I jumped forward there. The singing character with this old Renaissance collar on. Uh, it's sort of a Dutch tradition. So it has the old world look. Moving on to the, to the mustache, um, uh, the dark has started to set up, so I'm laying some light, warm strokes on there to indicate um, this character's blonde hair. You know, blonde is sort of tough to paint if you don't lay the darks in first. So having those darks in there first and then mixing light, warm yellows to go on top, will create, you know, how a blonde-headed person actually looks. So I'll slowly build, uh, build that up. Now I've jumped over to the nose. Something about the bottom of the nose that needs a little reflection tone. Uh, reflected light is good to indicate on your surfaces. So the white is bouncing up to the bottom of his nose. Uh, that white collar it's going to have quite a bit of white reflection, and so I'm pushing the reflection tones uh, on the nose there. That little area needs a little softening. There's a little too much dark coming through. And then next comes, let's see where we'll go next. A little more shadowing on the left side of the nose. If uh, two areas tend to blend together, you have to push the value down or up of its neighbor. And so many times it's color against color that creates a volume or a shape, not an outline. So I'm just pushing the tone next door and the nose seems to uh, be coming out a little stronger. You know, uh, one artist said that a painting is a thousand adjustments, maybe more like a million. When you lay those colors in place, you take that first step and lay a color in a spot and then try for its neighbor next door and your intuition will tell you if you look at your reference material your intuition will tell you what adjustment might be appropriate uh, for the color next to it. Now you notice I've, I haven't done a lot of painting on the eyes yet so uh, I'm saving them till last and I'm uh, in this section, blocking in uh, some cool and warm tones and to just sort of unify this background uh, mess that uh, was left there by the oil pickout. So as I laid in those grays, it becomes less of an issue. Uh, that is called a blender brush. It's fan shaped and it will smooth some of the tones. Now you don't want to go blender happy or over blend something because you'll lose all your work, but a little bit of a light touch will smooth out an area and you'll notice the skin now looks a little more smooth. 
So be careful not to blend too much though. As a, as a new painter, uh, you'll tend to want to smooth all your strokes out. And if you do that, it takes the vibrancy and the fun out of the painting. So just a little bit of blending. Now I'm working even with even a smaller brush. So here's a rule for you. When you paint, start with the largest brush you can stand. You want to paint with something that seems a little bit too big to force yourself to lay the main passages in first. Then after that, work your way down and save your small brushes for the finish. You don't want to start a painting by finishing it with a tiny brush. That will just force you into a really long painting cycle. Now this whole portrait is done in one setting and it probably took me maybe a couple of hours. Um, you know, if you tried to do this portrait with a tiny brush all the way through, you'd turn a two hour painting into a two week painting. And by that I mean 80 hours. So try to paint with the biggest brush possible and save your small brush details for last. And that's where we're getting to here. I'm moving toward the last part of the painting, a little bit of detail on the eyes. You know, the top of the eyeball has usually a cast shadow on it. I chose a blue and laid a, a blue tone in beside <clears throat> the eyelid. There's the spot of catch light. There's a quick look. And we're just about through with this demo. Now it's a little choppy. It could use a little more work, but hopefully it gives you the idea. I hope you've enjoyed this painting demo. Good luck with yours.